Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 6. You know, I feel sorry for, uh, for her that she literally risked her life to get here. A woman was found dead in a field and police believe she was fleeing the U.S. to try to reach Canada. Already this year, more than 600 people have come through our area and crossed into Canada. That's 200 more than all of last year. Valley News team's Ryan Laughlin joins us from Emerson, the Canadian border town that's seen an increase in border jumpers. It was just a half a mile south of here, the old noise decommissioned port of entry, where they found a woman's body in a field. It's believed that she was trying to get here to Canada seeking asylum. Officials believe her story will have to be repeated again and again before real change gets made. So this is all that's separating us from the United States. Greg Jansen is the Reeve of Emerson. So I would be like the mayor, I guess, for the whole area. He knows the border well. So I have a hunting camera set up here. Well, I took it down. I'm waiting for a battery pack. He says under the cover of night, Hundreds of asylum seekers cross the border into this small town of just over 600 people. And when they do get into town, they're knocking on doors, like not just knocking, they're just constantly banging on the doors, ringing doorbells, banging on windows, literally almost scaring the crap out of the people. When he heard somebody had died trying to get to his town, he was surprised, but not why you think. Are you serious? In May? I said, you're mistaken. Like, we're expecting this in the winter. He says the welcoming attitude of the people of Emerson is growing thin. Now reform is being called for. I kind of thought always in the back of our minds that something like that was going to happen. And now that it's happened, it's not surprising. And that's why I'm fighting. Let's let these people come to the port of entry. Asylum seekers can't come through the designated port of entry. Instead, they're being picked up by Canadian police in fields and in town. Jansen says that's a waste of manpower and is dangerous in part because he says some of the border jumpers are criminals. This guy had a very, very serious long record uh, that he will be in jail for a long time. For him, it comes down to trying to keep everyone safe. How many lives are going to have to be lost? Mr. Jansen tells me that Kitson County officials had emailed him today about wanting to form a committee to better address this asylum issue. He says he's interested to hear the solutions they come up with. From Emerson, I'm Ryan Laughlin, Valley News Live. According to the Kitson County Sheriff's Department, the woman found dead is 57-year-old Mavis Otutai. They believe hypothermia is a possible cause of death. The woman was from Ghana, Africa. Officials say a final autopsy report is still pending. A 14-year-old girl from Detroit Lakes died yesterday during a fall while hiking near Lake Tahoe's Emerald Bay in California. The El Dorado County Coroner's Office identified the teen as Chloe Kahn. Chloe recently completed the eighth grade at Detroit Lakes Middle School. The El Dorado County Sheriff's Office received a report of the girl falling about 50 feet near the Vikings Home Trail. The Sheriff's Office and others responded to help. An off-duty law enforcement officer who was in the area began extensive life-saving measures prior to medical personnel arriving. Chloe died after being taken to a hospital in South Lake Tahoe. Detroit Lakes Public Schools has released a statement saying that middle school counselors and staff are available as students in the community become aware of Chloe's passing. And they're asking to please keep the Kahn family in your thoughts and prayers during this tragic time. Dry, hot, quiet, we're loving the summer-like weather. Hutch, it'll be nice tonight too, right? It certainly will. There's hardly a cloud in the sky, so certainly we do not expect rain. But look at the temperatures. They have soared today in the western and central Dakotas, where it is 89 in Bismarck, 94 in Glendive, Montana, and the oil patch sizzling at 93. It is 86, the hot spot here in the valley right now in Grand Forks. Temperatures slipping down finally into the 70s after the 8 o'clock hour. It looks clear all night. It will be breezy with gusts from time to time over 20 miles per hour. Our dry weather won't last forever as we cap off our work week on Friday with a chance for thunderstorms. Some could be strong. I'll have hour by hour details on what you can plan for in your Friday afternoon and evening planner here in just a few minutes. Oh, could we need that right as we head into the weekend? A little bit of that will be handy. Thank you. You much. bet. A short time ago, emergency crews responded to a fire that broke out in a home in Drayton, North Dakota. Drayton fire officials say flames started in the kitchen area. Only the father was home at the time. Nobody was injured and fire officials say they were able to knock down the flames in about 20 minutes. A family of four will be temporarily without a home. 
Flames roared through a West Fargo home just before noon today as neighbors stood in shock watching the destruction. But the quick thinking of those neighbors and first responders kept this from becoming more tragic. Valley News Team's Bradford Eric was on the scene as the blaze tore through the home. It happened to one of my great friends and it doesn't happen a lot, but it's it hurts. Flames rip apart the roof of this family home along 44th Avenue West. The family visibly emotional, clutching each other, thankful everyone was safe and accounted for. It looks, it just looks like it's continuously gaining. I'm just hoping that the firefighters get this taken care of. The West Fargo Fire Department attacks the garage to keep the fire contained, roaring in with their ladder truck to rain down on it from above. But a pump issue delayed the aerial attack. Firefighters sitting helpless for a time before the hungry flames. We have it for situations where we can't exit with ladders and we need something safe to get up and, and put a water supply into a, a burning structure and this worked out well. As the flames died down, we learned that a neighbor and this West Fargo police officer raced into the burning home at the very start, rescuing all manner of family pets, cats, dogs, and Silas. Wow. Of all things, this is one of my good friend's house. And this is going to have a big effect on my friends. A terrifying lunch hour is just the start for the family. Their home likely a total loss. And as this community in West Fargo comes together to help their own, the fire department tells us they're still searching for what happened. In West Fargo, Bradford Eric, Valley News Live. Fire officials on the scene also issued a May Day warning. During the blaze, they couldn't get a hold of fire crews inside the home and had to rely on the truck horns to get firefighters out. No one was hurt. The FAA is investigating a fire that erupted from a laptop battery inside a carry-on bag aboard a JetBlue flight. The FAA says this is the 12th fire-related incident involving lithium-ion batteries, which are used in your cell phones, tablets, and laptops. But a local expert says, although it's rare, it can happen when the battery is punctured or overheated. A way to tell if your battery is old is if it has trouble holding a charge, is bloated, and can spin on a flat surface. It's for your average consumer walking around with a cell phone in their pocket, it's, they've pretty much got nothing to worry about. If you're charging your phone often enough to where you're plugging it in three or four times a day, uh, it's probably just time to replace it so you can avoid any type of issues down the road or, or overcharging. Devices with lithium-ion batteries should not be left in direct sunlight or heat. Also, the average life of a lithium-ion battery depends on the use, but if frequently used, it's one to two years. Later on Valley News Live at 6, some Fargo students finished their school year in a flourish today, giving quite a send-off to the fifth graders. Temperatures soaring into the 80s for many across North Dakota. 90s are in store for your Friday as well as some thunder. Your hour-by-hour details are coming up next on Valley News Live.